the Monday, August 20th Berlin Select Board meeting to order. Uh, to my far left is Pete Kelly, Wayne Lamberton, Jeremy Hansen to my right, I'm Brad Town. We also have with us Dana Hadley, the town administrator, and Diane Isabel, our town clerk. And additions or changes to the agenda, Dana? I have three additions that I'd like to add. I'd like to add uh, traffic signals at Fisher Road, Berlin Mall Road, and Hospital Drive to the agenda. I'd like to add a short discussion on a private road that has been proposed on the agenda. And I'd like to add letter to the sewer residential customers um, to the agenda. Okay, no objections. Then um, public comment. Well, we have a public and we have a public hearing at the um, about the speed limit ordinance as well, Brad. Okay. Well, that's right. Um, okay, the uh, public hearing amendment to the speed limit ordinance for Browns Mill Road. This has been under discussion for some time. Um, we have, as I mentioned at the last meeting, we had done our very best to research speeds down there. Again, it's a it's an unusual situation because it is a dead end road that usually only people that live there would be accessing it. Uh, the speed limit there is 35 miles an hour. Uh, we have a request to lower it to 25 miles an hour. When the police were down there, they did not find anyone was exceeding the speed limit. Um, the, I have written letters to property owners down there. I have three property owners down there that have encouraged it to be lowered 25. I did not hear from the remaining eight, I think it was. Um, and I also sent letters advising of the public hearing this evening, and we have one resident here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, Mr. Winter was here last time right. Right. Um, at our last meeting. Would you like, would you care to come up and express your views? Um, and I hadn't this, prepared to do that, but. You don't have to. This is okay. Sarah. This is Sarah Winters. Um, and she and I have talked quite a bit about the, about the situation down there. Um, and as you were told last week, they have property on both sides of the street. And I guess they have a basketball court or something. Do you need me to move street. if I'm speaking? It's just you're welcome to come up with us. Yeah. You don't have to speak from afar. So. I mean, you, we, we've talked about this. You've all talked about it. So really, the request came um, many years ago because when we got there, we thought, gosh, that's a high speed limit. Why is it so high? And the, the previous administrator had said to me that it shouldn't be that. We missed that. It should be classed at a lower yeah. speed limit when they did a, a big reclass. So we've just been, been working on it. And really, you can't go 35, but just because you can't doesn't mean we shouldn't change the li limit to a limit that makes sense okay. uh, for a road that has a 90 degree turn and turns into a private road and it's a bus stop for 15 kids. It's a busy place. And unfortunately, when the, the police officer was there, there wasn't much traffic. And there's not much you can do about yeah. bad if you don't catch it when folks are coming through but still well, have you ever notice any great amount of traffic on that road um I, you find it more a little bit later in the evening when folks are coming home from work and then on the weekends the people are in and out just people yeah. visiting are coming in and out a lot so it's not a high traffic road but everybody that comes in that road comes past our house twice yeah. <laughs> um and so it only takes one somebody not paying attention to you know have something happen so and, and you haven't heard anything from any of your neighbors who would, that would suggest that they would be against this I haven't no okay. and I don't think it really affects anybody <laughs> it's really more on principle of the fact that it's too fast the speed is too fast for a road of that length and um, especially that the public part of that road is so short with that stop for the turn um, and then the other piece of it is that really uh, the sign is so high at the top of the when you turn into our road the sign is so vertically high that you actually it's not in your field of vision so you can't even see that there is a posted speed limit and when we started talking about this a lot of my neighbors said we have a speed limit they didn't even know because they just don't even see it mm -hmm. um, and so part of the request <coughs> is that you maybe maybe not necessarily move that sign but move it down 
Mm -hmm. um, so that it's on a little post. Yeah, move it down on the post so that people could see it better. I don't think that's an issue at all. It's just we haven't done it waiting for this. Yeah, oh, no, no. We yeah. also talked last week about a children at play sign, mm -hmm. um, which we can order depending on the board's mm -hmm. thoughts. And that, that doesn't make the sign uh, too busy because I know there's like a, there's a uh, weight limit and the speed limit, and then the children at play would make for three large signs. Oh, I, that's I a good. Know. That's a good yeah, point. It probably I wouldn't fit know. on that particular yeah. post. It would need to yeah. go elsewhere. Yeah, so, so if we no, need, no. We, we needed a, an, another one, maybe like just past your driveway or something like yeah, that. Something I don't know like if that, that makes sense. But. Well, the, speed, the, 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 the posting to the road can be moved further towards 14. Um, you mean to a 12? Yeah. 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 Um, it's pretty close it's to right 12 now. Yeah. now. It is now. Yeah. Um, and I really don't know how more. anyone goes 35 there because if you're turning in there, um, we're not turned in there. You know, you have to slow down to make the turn. but. Um, it's fairly close to the to Route 12, the sign. And I, the way people take that turn as well, it also limits your view of the sign because mm -hmm. you're looking to make the turn and make sure there's not someone coming Come, in, no. so you don't even you just don't see it. But it's not a question. We can always make it more visible and make it, yeah. you know, better. I just haven't had to do that yeah. yet. But. <coughs> I think, you know, we, I made an effort, to, it was in the newspaper, um, I wrote to property owners twice. Um, Any objections from the fire department for, to re reducing the Not speed? Not at all. I'm surprised it's 35. Mm -hmm. Well, for them it's 15, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, and I haven't gotten any comments of people that are opposed to it. Uh, it does require an ordinance change, which is certainly not an issue, but if, if the board were to approve that, we would rewrite the ordinance, which actually I already have. Uh, it would be a 60-day, um, I bet you ought to look back, I guess, before the ordinance takes effect. And the reason for the ordinance is so that if the board, not the board, the uh, police department issues a traffic violation, we have to have the ordinance yep. match the. So we have. So there's no objections to lowering it. I have not heard from anyone in about lowering it. Can we put the ordinance change on our next meeting agenda? If Would you were to approve it, or whenever you approve it, you would approve it with the ordinance change, and then I would just take okay. that as the 60-day look back. So do we have to do a second public hearing for this, or? No. Okay. So pretty much in the vote on it now. Yes. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. I, I if, if you care to. Yeah. 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 But do we have to? Yeah. Are we in the select board meeting? I guess we are. You would want to do it in the select board meeting after the public hearing is done. And I didn't make that clear, but so I have that to the agenda. So, I would need to add that to the agenda as well. Okay. So, I'll move to adjourn the public hearing and convene the select board. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, Dana, would you like to admin the uh, minutes on the, the agenda? Um, yes, I would like to add the vote on the public hearing regarding the speed limit ordinance on Browns Mill Road. I move that we amend the traffic and vehicle ordinance to change the speed limit on Browns Mill Road from 35 miles an hour to 25 miles per hour. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. So now we have 60 days. It's a 60 day look back. I will have highway go down and change the sign. Um, well, you can't do that for 60 days. Well, I'm thinking of the, pup, the uh, yeah. lowering of the sign and the um, children at play sign. So hopefully, then in 60 days, you'll be all set. I love it. <laughs> Thank you all. Yep. Much appreciated. Have a good evening. Yeah. You're welcome to stay, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you. I thought I'd give you that opportunity. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Um, approval of licenses, purpose, vouchers, and applications. Still working. Through those. Okay, treasurer's report. Okay, I have given the July trial balance, budget status report, and delinquent tax report to the select board. Um, last week, we did have a tax sale. It was last 
last Wednesday? No, the 9th, the so it was last Thursday. It's on the 14th, isn't it? It wasn't the 14th. Oh, was it the 14th? No. Okay. Last Tuesday? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah All right. Go. So anyways, um, the night before we were going to have the tax sale, one of the um, homes, the taxes were paid in full on it for that, you know, all the past. I think that was so the that one we mentioned. It was a yeah, there was something some, some legal yeah. issues with that. Um, but the two mobile homes did not sell. However, the land did sell. The land on Cecil Avenue did sell. I did not have anyone here for the mobile homes. I have three different people here for the land on Cecil Avenue. So that's how that tax sale went. That's all of that. So what's the, uh, what's our going forward plan with the, the two that didn't sell? Well, you know, I've gone to the attorney quite a few different times, and he's actually told me, he said this is happening all over the state and towns that mobile homes are not selling. Um, one thing I can do is bring it to the next uh, board of abatement, see if they won't lower the, uh, the value of it, and see if we can't sell it that way. We can try again. However, every time I bring something uh, to tax sale, there's at least five hundred dollars, at least in yeah, legal we're fees. I can't get it back. At least, you know. So, so what, what, what were the uh, the back taxes on those two on those two homes? I don't have it right here, I but guess, a, um, a couple, actually, couple not. thousand, maybe. Yeah, hang on, I do have it okay. actually. It was in your packet last. Yeah, right, but I do right. have it here yeah. though. One of them was under fifteen hundred dollars. It's owed on taxes. It was like up to eighteen hundred with the legal fees, and then the other one was under $1,000 as far as taxes, so. Have you gotten any sort of communication from the owner? No, I'm neither one of them. And I've been, I have communicated with them, or sure. tried to communicate yeah. many, many times. Yeah. So, um, just, I mean, $1,500, $1,000, if the Board of Abatement comes in and says, we're gonna reduce the price by half, mm -hmm. is somebody gonna come in and buy that, buy those places for 750 or $500 when they're not gonna buy it for 1500 or 1000 I don't know, because nobody even comes in. Right, I, I don't think they are. I wouldn't yeah. think so. So <clears throat> I'm, I'm not sure it's So even. the other alternative that we have is for the select board to put the lowest bid in it. And uh, then after that, you know, if, if we're the low bid, huh, mm -hmm. which we probably would be at that point, uh, then we wait for the one year for it to be redeemed, and then after that one period of time, we decide what we're going to do with it. So either we're going to dismantle it or because because we're going to eat the taxes anyways, mm -hmm. essentially, sure. and we're going to pay the disposal. Right. right. Yes. But you could choose to do that. Is it, is it, we're going to pay for the lot rent till then. Uh huh. <laughs> Not the town. <laughs> What happens with some of these, if they don't pay their lot rent and then the owner of the uh, property does bring them to court, the court can try to force them to sell, to sell the mobile home in order to, you know, to get out from under. Mm -hmm. But the last one I heard of where they did that, the person did not sell it within a three-month period of time, and the court did nothing. That I know of. And, and one of these was over on Junction Road, and one of these was in Weston's, is that right? Yes, one was yes. in Weston's. One's, yeah, three mile yeah. Bridge Road. Three mile yeah. Road. Yeah, three yeah. mile Bridge, bridge Road was yeah. the other one, but okay. yeah. it was Weston's. Um, and the problem with going for an abatement, in my opinion, is that you, you, you fool with all the other assessments on mobile homes, and I don't think that's quite mm -hmm. cricket. Yeah, so it sounds to me like you know, we, and we need to just consider it maybe is maybe the alternative is to be the low bid if nobody does come here to buy it then we purchase it and then after a year's time when we redeem it we have to make a choice what we're going to do and maybe it is to dismantle it and I do believe that my I've least talked, favorite things about this job is taxes well, yes. um, I do believe like I think when I talk with Barry Town because I talked with Carl Rogers about it a couple of different times they tend from what he was telling me um, that they do they will buy them on occasion, and then they do dismantle it. Why would we buy it? Just because wait. Because we have to wait anyway. But we can then clear it out of there. Well, so yeah. we buy it for like five dollars. Well, no, we buy it for whatever we it would, is. The, we we, we would have to buy it for the taxes yeah. that are owed to us. So we don't pay anything really. We just well, it's a bookkeeping entry. But we still yeah. have to wait a year. Yes. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. But we're not getting any taxes in the in the meantime. Right. But it gives us the. The, the right, right 
to do something with it mm -hmm. rather than have it sit there. The so issue that happens if we don't, mm -hmm. it just keeps going on and mm -hmm. on and on, and we send tax bills every year. <coughs> but now you're saying the owner of the property may be able to. Well, if it's on, you know, for instance, the one at Weston's. Uh, if that person was not paying their taxes, eventually they, you know, the owners could bring them to court and try to you get. You mean their law? If they're paying their law. Yeah, excuse me, law rent. Yeah, yeah. that's what I meant. Law rent. Sure. Yeah. Are they subject to the same rules that we are as a municipality? I don't know what no, the I rules are. But the one I was talking about was not in Weston's, it was another park entirely, and this person was past due under taxes. I hadn't gotten to the point where I was going to bring it to tax sale yet, but then I'd gotten notification from the courts that she was uh, told by the court to sell it within three months' time or else, but three months passed and no nothing else. happened mm -hmm. that I'm aware of. So it seems it would be in the best interest of the town and the landowner to get that either offer, but have that generating revenue. As Town a, Fido. Yeah. <laughs> as opposed to, I mean, if it's not worth very much. As opposed to keep spending money to that, keep bringing it to tax I mean, sale, yeah. Because no matter what, I'll still have to bring, bring it back to tax sale, even if it's, you know, even if the select board says. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not it. a financial benefit, it's right. just clearing out the book. Right. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for that. Anything else, Diane? No. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Joe Staub, the Berlin Fire Department. Evening. The removal of the trailers will be about $3,000. Just to let you know. Thank you. <laughs> um, so two things. Um, about a year ago, came here and we had. I was introducing myself, and I think we talked also about um, every other year we we're doing a financial review and audit. Um, not sure where the books were going to be laying at the time, and um, didn't know when we outsourced our bookkeeping if we were going to have enough money to pay for the audit. So. The select board, I came to the select board and asked if we could change the schedule for the review and then going to an audit. Now, my auditors, or not my auditors, my bookkeepers, batch elders, is saying that being that we outsourced, we don't necessarily have to be or should be obligated to do an audit. And what I have to say is, my word's worth something, and all I need is one select board member to say, I'd like to see an audit. This is the easy part. <laughs> or, you know, the, what she would, she's suggesting is um, like a fin financial review or a consultation yeah, report. Yeah, conciliation. Okay. Um, she said that would be um, more suitable for what we currently, our situation being we outsourced our um, bookkeeping. But like I said, my word when I gave to the mm -hmm. town was I'd give you an audit this year. And all I need is one person to say yes. You're more in tune with this, Diane. What do you think? I think there should be an audit. No well, doubt in my mind. Well, okay. uh, otherwise, we're just saying, saying, bachelors is just saying to us, trust me. Right. 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 That's my so it's okay. so the so the responsibility falls back on them. But I don't think that 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 means we can avoid the audit. No. And it's been a problem for a while. Uh, prior to. I mean, that's true. Promise, when, promise. when we were doing our own bookkeeping. Yeah. yeah. I think it protects the fire department yeah. by having an audit done and, and citizens feel, at, and I don't know how much an audit costs, whether you've gone down that, that route. Um, yeah. But and I would also suggest that you have an audit. Bachelor's doing the books, right? Correct. So she wouldn't be doing the audit? No, she wouldn't. And so that was also on the back of my mind. If she gave us the report, she would be being paid for that. Whereas if I do an audit, she's not being paid for that. So, you know, I'm not, I'm going down some unfamiliar mm -hmm. avenues here. So. I think um, we need an audit. Yeah. Okay. And I do know the town is on every other year. The town's audited every year. Right. Every, every year. year. Every year. Yeah. Okay. 
And it's expensive. I mean, it's it certainly is not. I mean, yours wouldn't be as involved. No, as I believe it's so. somewhere around the six thousand dollar mark. It's, it's really yeah. What I believe is, I My don't goodness. know what's reasonable or not, but that is. I believe it was six or sixty eight. Yeah, that okay. sounds yeah. kind of high to me. It does. Did it? <laughs> yeah. I'd call around. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah. ours but runs about fifteen thousand. Okay. Yeah. Um, That's quite in which intense. Which is pretty intense. But I, I mean, we're talking all. But I do remember. Sorry for yeah, no. Go ahead. I'm what I do remember is there was a lot of back and forth because of our bookkeeping mm -hmm. right. and the collecting right. of, and so that probably also added to it. Mm -hmm. um, last year, I believe, um, Mr. Lamberton, you asked about doing an audit, a combined. Is that something we should be thinking about this year? I think it's too late for this year. Okay. But what I was saying was, why couldn't we in the future, the fire department pay for their portion, but have the same auditors audit both the town and the fire department? I think that's acceptable. I think that would be fine. But all I'm saying is that our audit's done. Right. Well, for And who was your FY auditor? 17. Father Gillen Segala. Okay. Come on, Pelier. We bid our audit work every three years. Um, and, and I think you've got a point is, if you've got your records are up to date and you have all your documentation ready to rock and roll, that way people don't have to search for things. That's what adds to the cost. Sure. Right. And maybe, I mean, it certainly wouldn't harm me if you would call them and say, we've had this discussion in the future, we're thinking the town, the fire department are going to use the same auditor. Could we get a price? Yeah. yeah. On an I can basis. give you the contact. As, a, a, as kind of as, as an addendum to the, right. to the town's audit, because we're just so closely linked. I mean, it, it's almost like money's coming out of one fund, which is right. going to another. It just happens to be different signatories on that bank account. We could mention it too. They'll be here 29. Yeah. Um, to but in the meantime, I'll, I can give you a telephone number so you can make the call. Thank you. Um, so, the second item, I do believe um, everybody might have got a copy of the report. Riverton building inspection. Okay, we, we are currently going under or trying to put together our 10 year plan. Um, and this building has been, um, this didn't happen overnight. Okay, it's been like in these, this condition since I've been on the department. It's just when we were doing our, our putting our 10 year together, um, I felt like this is the time we have to address this. And we all had a chance to review it. I looked at it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, beginning of the report, it does state that this building is below average condition. It's, it's kind. Mm. It is kind. <laughs> um, there were some things in the report that I think I should clear up when they were talking about uh, the water being put back into service. What we did is we took out some of the facilities. There is water. In the in the three bays, okay. It's not necessarily to um, the men or women's room that was disconnected. Um, and when they also talked about putting the the heating unit, the two furnaces, back into service, it's summertime. The thing, it was shut down, and it was not operating at the time of the inspection. So yes, there was some evidence of some some rot within the windowsills. Yes, there was. Um, they were talking about the structural concrete or the the structure, the metal structure itself, and comparing the hall um, where they used to have bingo and spaghetti dinners and such, and then to the three bay garage. Now one was definitely in better shape than the other. The three bay garage is in much better shape in the hall and that is for the settlement in the concrete slab which this is right adjacent to um, Levine's um, granite shed and many years back I don't remember there used to be a mill on the river so there was a lot of fill in this area and being so close to the rail the railroad the vibrations of that 
I am sure, um, with the concrete slabs and anything else in there for fill, whatever they topped it with, has just filled the voids over the course of time. Um, so the hall portion, the two corners, the two ends, are settled quite a bit. And that is also putting some stress on the remainder of the building. Um, I think there's, I'm not sure where we're gonna go with this. And, and I'm here, this is just to open up the conversation and see if there is you know, anything the town would like to see. Um, you know, I, I see our options is, you know, right from the beginning about a year ago when I brought this up, was, you know, I guess look at it at a management standpoint and we just sell it. And by selling it, you get out from underneath the building, you get out from underneath um, an extra engine. I think there's some benefits to that. Um, talking with some of the uh, some of the board members and some of the members on the department, some community members, you know, you could you could fix it. You can jack that concrete up, fix hall and bay and the three bay garage. You could fix the whole thing. That's going to be costly. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I, I ask, what is the purpose of the hall? Okay, I don't think we're having spaghetti dinners nor are we going to be doing bingo anytime soon. Um, you could remove the building and replace it. You know, you could put up a, a garage of some sort, a similar size without the, the hall portion. Um, you know, that right there is sixty to 80000 for probably just the shell. And then you have the plumbing, the concrete work, electrical. Um, or we could remove the hall. The three bay is structurally sound. Um, I mean, those those are our options. Um, you know, the fixing it, the replacing of it, the removal of the hall. We could do any of those things. Um, and I guess at one one point, it was mentioned maybe even the town might be looking for some sort of expansion. So, you know, having a, a joint um, either highway or PD, if they had any interest in being down there. Um, I think there, there's some options out there, and I'm just <coughs> looking for some input, maybe from, from the select board or the individuals on the select board. Well, uh, have, you, have you priced out any of your options yet, or are you just in the... We're just in the beginning stages. Yeah. In the report, it also states that you know maybe we should do some excavation holes for investigating what is actually underneath those piers, um, and then we give us a better idea of what is underneath the the three bay garage. I wouldn't do the excavation near the garage end. I mean, I think we're just a little close, um, close to the rail. Um, we also have the water line and power going in that side, so I would stay away from the three bay garage portion. I wouldn't mind and probably will be excavating out in the parking lot on the hall end, mm -hmm. just to get a better idea of what's there. Um, so, you know, that's going to be, I believe, my next step. I, I can't recall. I've heard there used to be an old engine over there. Do we use that? We still do. And what's in it? We have one engine over there. And that's all? That's it. Um, used to be you had a lot of responders on that side. Currently, we have now four of us that can respond there. Um, and three of them are EMT or EMR certified. Um, what we don't have, and I, I had to go back and look at the different, the call volume. Um, so the call volume, most of those are over there, are motor vehicle accidents. You know, Riverton Station in the last nine years had seven structure fires, five alarm activations, and those are private homes, um, and four grass fires. We also responded out of there mutual aid to Roxbury and Northfield to four structure fires and one grass fire fairly substantial. Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't necessarily think we should base our decision on our neighboring community. Um, I think that's how we ended up getting our tower when Montpelier and Barrie and some of the other neighboring communities didn't have um, a lot of those types of equipment. That's how we ended up with what we have now for our tower, mm -hmm. which really surprised me on their decision making. Um, so right now, unless I hear anything different, I'm going to do an excavation in, on one side and get an idea of what uh, we have for some st structural foundation underneath those piers. Have you given any consideration as to how long it's going, to, how that will change response time down in Riverton? I have. Um, now, when that station was built, they didn't have the mutual aid system that they have today. So, you know, we, we all took care of our own, is what it was. You know, since then, the neighboring communities were all involved in the mutual aid system where we respond with each other. Um, I give you, for instance, down Junction Road. We get a confirmed structure fire in Junction Road. It's Montpelier and Berlin automatic zone. We get a structure fire on Route 12 in Riverton. It's Northfield and Berlin automatic zone. Um, I don't necessarily think on the structure on structural fires on those types of incidences. It's going to change much. What it might change is, is your motor vehicle accidents. You know, we know Crosstown is uh, open seasonally, if we want to call it. And we, we can never tell how long that's going to be. Yeah. Um, so. Is, is there any interest from, from anybody else? And this is something that Joe and I have talked about, for, about um, having other town resources um, equipment over on that side, staging a you know staging highway equipment, or if this if this thing gets rebuilt, using one of the bays for a cruiser, and having a, one of the police officers, you know, leaving from over there. It just seems to me that anytime you do that, you fracture things. You know, you need everything <coughs> needs to be under the direction of the road foreman or the police chief, and and whenever you try to have a uh, satellite <laughs> location that never works. Well, the only thing I can see is some of the equipment that's outside over at the, at the town garage now could go down there. I could see a pile of sand there, you know. But, storage. but the trouble there is, I mean, you have to have some, some way to load it to the truck. Right. So you're looking at another payload or at least a loader of some sort. And then you're driving over there to load it to, saw, to sand back across that road. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any idea what the place is worth on the free market as is? I do not. You do not? Or you do I do not. Do not right? It seems like a lot of building for what, a lot of old building for what we're using it for. Well, pretty much you're using it just for storage. That's what one, one truck. Well, we got one truck. Um, we do put that, put our the hazmat trailer down there throughout the winter, yeah. keep it in storage. Um, it's an expensive storage unit. Mm -hmm. You're back. Um, so if you were to tear that down or tear down the hall part of it, you would you still have you'd still be able to use the three bays that are there for your truck. Okay. That, that's one of the options. Mm -hmm. And you could take what was uh, what was the hall? Um, plant grass on it and have farmers markets down there. You know, I don't necessarily know. Um, I don't think we need a large parking lot down there. Um, they need access to their mailboxes, and people need access to the river. Well, until we have something a little bit firmer and an idea for price, okay, yeah. we're kind of yeah. at a loss. Well, I didn't know if there was a, you know, a fifth option or sixth option yeah. that I'm not thinking of right now before I uh, 
go get prices. Yeah. Uh, like I said, the next thing will be some excavation uh, holes to be dug, yeah. and we'll inspect that. And at the same time, we'll get some we'll get some uh, quotes on maybe the dismantling of a portion of it versus the whole thing. You know, I think if I, if I'm going to ask for some, I'm going to have to ask for all of it, and then uh, see where we go from there. Seems by the time they pull half of it down. I mean, I've taken a few buildings down, and they just go into a dumpster in six hours, whether you pull half of it or all of it. <laughs> and, uh, but, I mean, I understand you're renovating, but now you're fixing something broken, as opposed to... Well, the way, that, the, the, the way the building is, though, is, is there are, there are right. two clear parts of the building, uh -huh. one of which is pretty good. I mean, it's, it's, it's not great, but, and there's one side that's clearly clearly in need of help but the way that the uh, the, the way that the, uh, the the meeting room over on the on the south side is um, you can you can see clearly where the structure is like separate sort of like hung on to something on, onto the, the other spot where the, where the bays are mm -hmm. and I think and we talked about this you know I think one of the reasons that, that the bays have been stable was because they were expecting to, ha to handle the weight of the trucks so they spent a lot more time and energy uh, making sure that that was stable. And over on that side, you don't have sort of like any sort of like weird metal fatigue or other sorts of major problems. Where if, if you want to go over there on the, uh, yeah, you know, just sometime, it is. I mean, there's literally. I mean, there's a slope like like this in one corner. It's it's pretty scary. Mm -hmm. but yeah, but over on the other side, it's it's Not it's okay. okay. It's okay. It could just be the thickness of the concrete. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I haven't been by for a while, and when I do drive by, it just sort of looks like a dilapidated building. Yeah, peek, peek yes. in the window. Yeah. Give me a call. All I'll right. go down and let you in. All right. Well, I think I can get in anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I guess, Mr. Staub, until we have some, some numbers, we're in agreement with you as far as you want to take in. Look at another use for it, or another, another uh, way to uh, use that land. But the, but the, the general impression that I'm getting, and correct me if I'm wrong, that probably putting something over there from the town is, is not is not really a, a way forward. Okay. okay. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Check one off the list. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Other than yeah. just cold storage. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and if we if we need cold storage, I mean that could also be scoped into any renovations. Yeah. I mean, does does Tim want to store sand over there? Does it make sense to store sand sand over there? Or you know, you're going to have another load of it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, the only thing I was thinking is over there is just the storage for equipment. Mm -hmm. Something needs to okay. go undercover. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it doesn't have to be anything too. You never can have too much storage, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> because you always fill it up with junk. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we like, I think there's two or three pieces of equipment that are outdoors now, and they should be undercover. Mm. So that would be the only thing I would think of. For you just put the excavator there in the winter. You know, because you don't really use it that much. Could be an impoundment area. Mm. Well, that's an idea. If we're going to give it away, I mean, if the building is not going to get us any money to speak of than I think salvaging the three bay garage. Did, did you read the inspection? Yeah. But I mean, as long as the, as long as the, um, the load carrying walls are true, mm -hmm. as far as cold storage, you don't need a whole lot. Mm -hmm. All you really need is just one plug in to plug a uh, motor in to warm up so it will start. Yeah. So if, if, if we used it, the police department used it for storage, for impound, would there need to be any sort of additional access control over the yes. base? Yeah. I mean, you'd have to have some way to chain secure link. secure okay. the area. Yeah. So you oh. just do a chain link inside. Well, oh, chain link depends on the outside. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. oh, over, over, off on the side. Okay, yeah. okay. Then have the impoundment outdoors. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you could break that. You know, it's well, at least one. Good use of the space. Sure. R rather, rather, it would be almost as pretty as what we currently have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, we we'll will dress it up. We can plant some flowers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you okay. very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. The um, Berrytown Thunder Chicken Snowville Root. We met two weeks ago, I guess Jim was in, to talk about um, proposed route to get to the Irish Hill trails. I have talked to Chief Wolf about it. Um, he does not recommend it. Um, he feels it's a safety issue uh, because of the length of travel and the heavy traffic on Crosstown Road. Um, it would require an ordinance change if the board decided to do that. Um, and we had had the idea that you were going to be starting from Applebee's parking lot. Um, yeah. Do we have that straight? I mean, is it depends on, on well, good, good news, bad news. I, I, I wear a lot of hats in this project from the ATV folks all the way over to the snow machine folks. So to be, I, I got to be sure I'm answering the right questions with the right hat on when we're talking about that, that there's currently from that side of the valley, you can work your way up with a snow machine and come into Applebee's. And if you're headed that way, you, as frequently happens, you head in the exact opposite direction and wind your way out around back Robbins Barn and finally get hooked over there. Is it because 89 is that? Right, that's, that's yeah. part of that. Area. And it's just that, yeah. unfortunately, over time, the, the Berlin clubs and volunteers just kind of petered out. It happens, it takes, all it takes is a couple of guys to get divorced and transferred in their work or something. And there's, Next thing you know, there's people aren't showing up to meetings, and then the, the trails go down. The Thunder Chickens picked up a part of it and have been taking care of that. And they're looking to work with the Northfield clubs to, to get that reestablished so you can go from here that way over the hill into Northfield. And as part of that, since ATVs are they're cropping up all over the place, and there's I also belong to a club in Northfield for that. And we thought, well, since there's ATV trails out there already, maybe we could co-op this together and share the cost and the, the maintenance and that in and the, what it takes for law enforcement and stuff to keep things going. So you can currently get two Applebee's or you can pull your trailer in and unload here and access the vast system out, right, actually literally right by the vast office, mm -hmm. out, out through the park. As far as ATVs, is, there's just the Irish Hill itself and whatever road access is already legal. But my understanding is that it's not, like you couldn't ride from Irish Hill to here legally today to get into Applebee's, it would, it would take you know, in addition to the, you know, whatever's on the books now currently. We had, from looking at the lay of the land, thought for ATV traffic, the, the best way to go would be to come around the back and down the side of this and, and out and underneath the bridge out that way. And your traffic comes and goes, you know, it's mostly evenings and weekends, and usually it's posted at 10 miles an hour, and particularly if you're going past the police station, people tend to, tend to follow that and behave themselves as they come down through. And the sleds, We've got tentative permission to bring the trail out around, loop around out here down to the old pond road to get up to the road to get under the bridge where we used to go before without accessing down through here. So you essentially be kind of going, splitting out and coming together over here and then down and under the bridge. Mostly you got to get some way to get underneath the interstate or else you're, you know, there's, there's no way to get over to the other side. I heard from some, some residents that were also concerned about the traffic and safety issues, particularly on uh, Riffield Road and then uh, whichever route you take, whether it's Shed Road or um, Patron Pike to cross town, uh, they were not, didn't seem super supportive of the idea. Well, it seems to me for quite some time that there that there was a trail there and people I never know knew of any incidents or anything anyone had along the way there. and. We, but to be clear, we're, we're not talking about a trail. We're talking about being on the road. You literally have to be on the edge of the road somewhere to get over to, well, not really a bridge, but the culvert that's there right. and something to get around. I, I saw, I, before the Irish Hill Trails, there was a little path that came out of the bush, because I walked that. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure if that's what you meant, or if you actually meant like from where Black Street comes on in, from that curve is where I'm most familiar with, to the Irish Hill parking lot. Right, we would much prefer to be up in the woods, but 
there's got to be a way to work around the private landowners and city of Montpelier. We had a tentative trail, what in what appears to be an old road, on this side of Black Road, crossing the Brookfield Road and down below, and it literally comes up points up to the trail. But they're they're unwilling to let us use that on the left side, right? For, right. For, so that that wouldn't be necessary to do that. But they're they're unwilling to let us do that. And at this point, we haven't secured permissions or even you know, tentatively for from the private landowners because somehow you got to get up in the woods far enough to get up around the Montpelier property that extends mm -hmm. up beside the Irish Hill Trail to get around there. I imagine you you have some sort of insurance, but I'm still hesitant due to the liability it subjects the town to. I mean. We're all going to sit here and tell you it's okay to do it. We'll get thrown into that court case one way or the other. And as I've been along that, I'm trying to imagine, because actually the town's been up there. It's a little bit past, but they've been doing a little bit of culvert work. And I remember you were saying when the snow's plowed over? Yeah, it generally fills that in, and you, and the sleds don't want to be in the track road, so they ride up on the bank as best they can, and they go along. and depending upon sometimes it's just from the natural plowing of the snow the wind flattens it down mm -hmm. and and sometimes you take the groomer just drives up there with half sets off the road and squashes that down so you have a single lane of, of traffic there for people to go on there mm -hmm. and it's it's never the first choice in building a trail anywhere to, to use the highway the idea is to right. be off the road but there are unfortunately plenty of areas where they do and they seem to get along okay yeah. they really the people that are disturbed the most by it are the actual people riding the machines that they don't want to be on the road. It's just in order to get from point A to point B, sometimes you got to do that sort of stuff. <clears throat> and, and yes, both VAST and VAST do have liability insurance, and that's kind of part of them as a management, because you get people out, around, you inevitably end up with machines on a road somewhere anyway, whether it's legal or not, mm -hmm. you run into that, particularly in the summertime. It's a lot easier for people to go sneaking out through the woods somewhere and drop down here and go there. And without some kind of a managed trail system, they end up in God knows whose backyard. We're already, we haven't even done anything and we're getting people starting to complain to us like, what are we gonna do about it? Well, you know, we're not, we don't even have a, the, the problem is you don't have the trail. Not that, right. not that, you know, that there's a club. The problem is that the club doesn't have a trail there so they don't have any jurisdiction to really do anything about putting right. up signage or trying to clear or anything. So it seemed like a seemed like a fine opportunity to take advantage of the services and everything that are here and get connected into that and to kind of help the neighborhood kind of get keep this contained because these things are cropping up all over the place. I mean, you can walk out through there and right up, you can see they've been crisscrossing around and down and all the way from here, play on Northfield already. You can you could literally, if you wanted to, jump on a machine and ride to Northfield tonight if you wanted to mm -hmm. go out through there if you weren't concerned about whether it was legal or not. I could go rob a store tonight too if I wasn't concerned about it. Right. No, but, no, the idea that there are, that it, it's not like it's the wilderness that there are trails out there already. Right. They're, they're in use. It'd be more of trying to find some way to actually make it legal and managed. Right. And then, you know, and that's a part of the, the link to where you can park your truck and where buying gas and that sort of stuff is right. is right here. Joe was torn mine. <laughs> Did you want to come? Yeah. Well, if we're getting up a group. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, I walked along and some, some places it just drops off. In some places it is very close and I think that road gets narrow. I, I'm pretty familiar with it. And I'm trying to imagine a car coming one way or another way or somebody running or biking or ATV in or snowmobile and it puts, it puts quite a load on that road. It's not really designed for that. I mean, it may be a good way to get from point A to B in an off or an ATV type vehicle, but when I was walking along there, I was like, I, and I'm not an ATVer, and I'm not a sledder, I'm not for them, I'm not against them, I really don't care. I'm just thinking, holy smokes, I wouldn't be riding in the ditch, I'd be out here on the road. Well, certainly in the summertime, you're riding on the yeah. shoulder of the road, right. and the road by, by nature widens with the snow. And the sleds are only four feet wide, so it's not like it's taking up a lot of space there. And you and you you slow down, make your best along the side of the road, and get up through there. And once again, it's not the preferred method, but that's how you get under the interstate and across the water out here. Mm -hmm. And without that, essentially, the, the project is pretty much done because there's if there's no way to to get to there. So basically, you need permission to get over the outflow of the pond 
and under the throughway. Right. And then you have permissions from the landowners from there on in. The, the folks up through it's uh, have tentatively, you know, from the explorations we've had, and we were initially going to just cross what I think of as the old Black Road Bridge yeah. and stay in the woods along the side and get around, go down through there. But that's all you know, city of Montpelier property, which they won't allow for us to use. So the, the next alternative was to use the side of the road and keep beating the bushes, trying to find a way to get up above and loop out around. Because I remember years ago, that's what you did. You came down, we call it the stagecoach road. If you could go from here down to the rustic down in, in Northfield, but you would come down and somewhere along there, you'd take a left and you'd be and come along and somewhere back, I think this side of the cemetery or some, somewhere in there, you would come back down onto the road and up and across and then back into the fields. And I grew up over on Stewart Road. So you would come across and then along the road up over the interstate up above and into the fields to get down to there. But you could also go from the four corners and come out and, and looped around up underneath there. And Dana, did you get a hold of VLTC about ordinances? I did. I, I gave you um, their model ordinances that they um, yep. promoted. They have the model ordinance for the ATV and they also have for snowmobiles. Um, and we certainly, it's not an issue to write the ordinance okay. based on their model. Yeah, and, and, and certainly if there are questions that I've I have general knowledge about most everything, but into more specifics, but we do, the folks from the two organizations manage over 5,000 miles of active legal trails, and if they're, and I'm sure yeah. if you had, did want to speak to space it takes on the road or types of you know, traffic volume, any of that sort of stuff, yes. they'd be more than happy to tell you how it works in other places. Because mm -hmm. certainly you do, literally, you you if you on. go it over into New Hampshire, you pull in, you literally, it's like riding down the brain up there. Okay. Right. You, you literally come in and drive right through things. the middle of town to the gas station and the pizza place and, and around like that, which... Well, they had some like on 302 where you go across the railroad tracks to what used to be, it's closed now, that gas station. Used to be the old Dunkin' Donuts was there. Yeah, that yeah. snow machine trail goes right yeah. down across right. through there. And they, just this summer, you can now use a section of Route 25 for ATVs to go from Grant's store down around the corner to Zion Hill, connecting to, there's two pretty good sized trail systems, one in Washington, one in Thompson. And they've now, the state has given them permission to use, a, well, it's gotta be a quarter to a half mile, maybe. I don't know if you're familiar with 25, like if you're going to Bradford, out through yeah. 302, mm -hmm. that, that first town that's there. From that Thompson. store. Thompson. Yeah, the, yeah, I think Thompson. it's West Thompson. We used to, yeah. back in the day, I used to play in the band and we used to play jobs at the town, at the town hall mm -hmm. out there. But you can go from the, the store or gas station there down, literally down the state highway now that they allow for them to do that and that's been working out. Well do we want to hear from the chief or did you say? I have spoken with the chief it? and he did tell me that he was not in favor of it uh -huh. due to the length of travel on the roads, heavy traffic. He felt it would be a safety issue. I certainly could ask him to come in and talk with you directly about it. I think it's going to be hard to pass an ordinance when the chief of police says that he's not in favor of it. Mm -hmm. I would, yeah. I'd like, I wish there were an easier way because I think that it's a, it's a, a nice addition and certainly we like people to trade in our businesses and things like that and yeah. all of that, but it is a long length on a public road and I have a lot of concerns about Shed Road um, here and Crosstown Road as well. Um, Brookfield Road, I know the traffic isn't as much, but still it's a country road and I just meeting several snow machines on a dark winter night I don't know I'm just which which could happen but it, but know. it's unlikely it's, mm -hmm. it's not you like know. it's not yeah. like packs of wolves and things sure. that they travel yeah, out there know. together yeah. and it's uh, and I don't know what the numbers of volume one could expect to see and that sort of stuff it's usually during the daytime and it's usually on a weekend that you're, you know that you see coming right. not like people don't go out at night after work and actually nighttime from a writer standpoint is safer you, you, can, you can see stuff coming and people can see you and that sort of stuff, right. that sort of thing. And certainly your club members are respectful for landowners and... and well, we, we are, essentially, you know, well, kind of that, those that 5,000 miles, well, we, don't, we don't own any of it. That's all the good graces of the yeah. people that, that do. So you kind of have to, you know, it's not, 
you, know, you don't keep the trails open if you don't, uh, you know, take care of people and do the right thing with sorts of things. If the board would like, I could contact. Um, is it Vast would have the insurance information? Vastwood and the Vast office, which handily for for this project, okay. they're both right here locally. With and them. I will speak. I could also speak to the league about our insurance liability, mm -hmm. and I would agree with you, Pete. The towns have the big pockets, mm -hmm. right? So if this. Yeah, I don't, I don't, right. I don't know either. Hear from them. You know, I'd be glad to bring that back and see what they say if you'd like me to do that. Sure. All right, and so that to, to be sure, I'm reporting back to you know where we're at for that. So far, I will are, be in we, touch are we with talking you. about? You're talking the length of the highway, which I, I'm sure, from your standpoint, it seems like a long ways. For those of us who have to do it, it don't seem that far at all. Right. So, so it's yeah. a matter: are we talking about the entire? Section we're talking about, or just on Braintree Road, uh, right up down the Dr Braintree Road part of that, or just this section here under the bridge, or well, I was thinking that just if if one section is not good, it kind of thwarts your plan, doesn't it? I mean, if if you well, the, if the we number told you one not thing to is, use Crosstown Road, it doesn't do right. Without that, bad. you can't get under the bridge, so the rest of it is is a mute point. Yeah, but if that seems to be a possibility, they can continue to to explore with the land and see if there's a way to avoid using any of the rest of it. Yeah. But if it if it's which that's probably if we're measuring distance, that's probably more of it on the back side of the pond than there is here. So it's it's more a matter so that people got an idea of what it is that they're you know, whether the which way to go, I guess. Mm -hmm. so. I would continue if I were you, I yeah. would continue to explore the very most you can to get off the public yeah. road. Mm -hmm. I mean obviously I understand you gotta get under the highway somehow. Yeah, um, and just the shorter the, the shorter the distance, the less the risk. Yeah, yeah. well, it's it's better for everybody. I mean, that was yeah. the original plan. We thought we were in pretty good shape because Montpelier took quite a bit of time and talked to us like they were yeah. asking the. You know, it seemed like it was all going well, but apparently something somebody sure. got scared about water quality or something. You know, mm -hmm. sure. you're driving trucks right over the water pass here. Right. What, yeah. what harms the sled <laughs> going out through the woods? But but that's you know that's their property, so they get to choose what they want to do. You know? yeah. But I'd be glad to get more information on the insurance sure. aspect of it because okay. I have not done and, that. Yep, and I can send you the contact information for the folks from both organizations. Would you please? That, that would they be could, very helpful. You know, fill in, Thank hopefully, you. filling yeah. blanks on that sort of great. stuff. Okay, okay. So okay. We're, Thank we're all set. Yep. All right. Thank, Thank you. Very much. Thanks very much. Okay. Um, Ashley Squire and Robert Crouch working yep. in the town right away. Come on up. Robert, hi. <laughs> We have uh, an application to work in a town right away. It looks like you're replacing a driveway culvert. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they're at 58 Paul Avenue, which is off of Highland Avenue. Um, yeah, the culvert that's there is uh, starting to cave in. I'm not sure it's worked it happens. in a while. Yep. <laughs> it <happens. laughs> so it's ineffective for what it's, you know, mm -hmm. right. intended purpose right. was. If you guys want to see its picture. We're really not working in the road. Um, right, You're, the, the right of way is um, probably up there. It's 15 or 20 feet from the center of the road. And so. Um, <coughs> yeah, the two pictures together kind of give you the. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's about four feet off the road. And uh -huh. It's about, it's 24 feet long. What's the <coughs> diameter? 12, 12 inches. Yep. Is it ledgy there? Is it ledgy? Um, I, I don't really know. I mean, if there's, a, it's, there's an existing culvert there, which is, you know, I think we will, would, would like to maybe sink it in the ground a couple inches farther than it was. Yeah. Because right now the top is exposed, yeah. which is probably the reason it rotted out. Right. It's rusted. You're having someone come and do that for you, yeah. dig it out. And, yeah. So would this culvert yeah. be subject to the minimum diameter? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Is it is it pretty flat there? Either side of the culvert is it pretty flat or does it pitch away? Um, well, it's pitching down a little like bit towards you know the the, the whole lot has a mm -hmm. slight pitch to yeah. it. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking that you might have to ditch up through there to get it down further. You know, get right. the, get so the edge of the culvert down a little bit. Up, up. 
I think that's what it needs, Wayne, yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah. It needs to go down a little deeper. Yeah. And the ditch could be ditched out a little bit because it, once it gets past our driveway, it's a pretty good slope down to a culvert that goes mm -hmm. across the road and then down the hill. I don't so, think we can make an increase in size that was already installed that's a repair. Yeah. So right now, what's there? I don't think it's working, so if it gets any water, the ditch is probably running out on the road and eating the road away, you know, yeah. so. No, I guess that in the past that we passed an ordinance that um, there'd be a minimum diameter to the culvert. <laughs> oh, a, a minimum diameter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is what? 18. Mm -hmm. but Wayne was, Wayne was, was saying. Was it driveway? Well, we're replacing one of the troubles is it, it, a lot of this just depends on how much water flows go, you know, what the well, flow is. Well, if you put is. 18, I don't know, if, because of the, you know, it's, it's, because of the way it's laid out, if you go 18 inches, it's going to um, make everybody else's culvert Smaller. on the street obsolete. Um, and it's going to be hard to get the minimum pack you need over the top of it if you yeah. do that. And the pitch. Right now, at 12 yeah. inches, it's exposed, and what I'm told is you need a good six inches over the top of it. Yeah, to give it strength. Yeah. So if we do that, then it's going to be quite a transition into the yeah. road. Mm -hmm. So all of that won't work. Would the board be amenable to approving this upon the highway superintendent going up there and taking a look at sure. what they uh, have? And the culvert that's in there now, is it filled in at all, or is it... Open? No, the ends of it. I can't. Oh, oh the ends the are open. Ends are open. Yeah. And yeah. you've had no troubles with it not being able to handle the water that's going through it. We don't know. We only just she closed just on the, the house, house two weeks ago, and it's been dry. So, oh. but just, there's a section that's caved in. Yeah. So, uh, you know, without sounds tear. like one of my door yards. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't sound good. <laughs> no, it was one of the things we saw that clearly yeah. we figured we're gonna have to fix that. <laughs> Well, I would say have Tim go up and just look at it. I think he can, but I also think that it's a it's a grandfather culvert, and I don't think he's repairing the culvert. He's not putting in a new one, and I think he can replace it with what he has. Right. Move to approve the permit for digging within the time right away. So. <clears throat> it's really for what it is. It's a no brainer. You're going to have a working culvert rather than one that's not. Right. Yeah. Right. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. So do we need to wait for the town? Um, I will give this to Tom, uh, Tom Badowski. He will issue you the permit tomorrow. Oh, oh so great. We, we, awesome. we, we, great. We didn't make it contingent on the hire. Yeah. Okay. No yeah. digging yeah. tonight. Right. Right. More we, we're so not digging tonight. You need to wait <laughs> maybe 12 hours. <laughs> so if you were going to do it tonight, that <laughs> might no, be a problem. Right. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, email from VTrans regarding the August 6th meeting. That was just, uh, I had given you in your packet the original email that um, Mahendra had sent me regarding the four options, and then this was his understanding. The email from the 15th was his understanding from the meeting that he attended on the 6th, and he um, believes, and I would agree with him, that you preferred option four which was to do a 40-hour road closure while they do that work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think he would just like some confirmation from us, maybe by a letter, that this, is, this option would work and so that they could put out their um, bid specs. That's pretty much what we agreed to. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, just take and confirm that for him. All right, so I'll go ahead and write a yeah. letter saying that that option is fine with the board. And and maybe just put in there that and we, it was understood that airport road would be used as a detour. Okay. Just because those are folks originally that wanted to make it the Barry Montplay Road, that just makes me nervous. Right. And if they come back into the picture and it's the Barry Montplay Road, you know. Yeah. You know. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Imagine the truck traffic. <laughs> no thanks. Um, bid opening for the police department. Please well, the door? I'm sorry to say I didn't get any bids. I had no interest in that. Hmm. Police doors. Um, 
I gave you a copy of the the RFP. I don't know if I'm missing something in it that I the, didn't tell. These them doors or? are just those two. They're they're the they're the door that looks like that one. Yeah. That is the outdoor, and then there's a door about the same size on the other side of the building where the Correct. officers enter and, and exit. They are made out of this metal, I guess it's steel. It's storefront, yeah, um, storefront glass. And they're rotted. Um, I bet you it's less than $5,000. I would say, um, I did get a price from Alan Lumber on the uh, replacement parts and it was almost four. Um, you should so, call like glass connection or um, even Portland glass. What's that garage door company? They do entry doors too. And on and Barry. Bigelow. Yeah, Bigelow. Bigelow. Yeah. I think he does doors too. I think he does the operators. I don't think. He, I don't think he does. Should doors. I go ahead and get three quotes? I'd get um, a couple. I mean. Okay. I don't know if you're going to get more than a couple. No, probably um, not. No, probably not. I I was not quite sure what it would cost, and mm -hmm. my luck, it would be five thousand one hundred one dollars or something. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, uh, Mirror Lake Road, Colbert. Okay, well I have to fall on my sword. Right. Uh, <laughs> you may have noticed I didn't call you for a special meeting to talk about culverts. And that is because when I was talking with John Grenier a couple weeks ago, I told him we needed that culvert as soon as possible because I was anxious to have it happen. So he went ahead and ordered it. Um, he did tell me that he had verified prices and he felt that what he suggested was the very best option for the town. So I'm sorry that happened. I wish it hadn't, but that's what that's what happened. Did you find out if they were going to use a precast uh, floor to that or if they're going to pour in place? Um, I believe they're going to pour in place. And I've also thought I would ask John to come in and talk to you so he could answer those types of questions for you. He is putting the construction out to bid. Um, and Use that's a core mud slab and bolt it down. Well, I was just thinking, think how fast it would be if they just put a precast in there, just a floor. And I could be wrong, don't but, you know. But how big is this core? Um, 12 by. So the precast has to be 16 drag, feet wide. Drag it in on a truck. We'll bring it on a, yeah, on a, tra on a mm -hmm. trailer set and set it with an excavator. Mm, let's see. And so as we Could enter be into the important day, though, too, right? What's that? Pouring it underwater is going to be complicated. You're going to have to pump around that. That's why I was just wondering if they did it. So I thought it would be good if I had John come in and explain yeah. what his recommendations are rather than have me try to do it because I'm not going to do it so, very well. So where are, we, where are we on the time on this? Was it October? You still there, Angelina? Well, Hello? I mean, was it October you couldn't work in the water? Well, or did you, they can get, you can get tonight. variances for yeah, that, but tonight. usually tonight. October 1st, you're out of water. Right now. Okay. So September. It's August 20th. <laughs> just is it the same well, phone? thing is, if they use a precast slab, all they got to do is look up there and run one go bolt set it, uh, <laughs> set it down, she can't bolt the same tool, and bury it in the day. Yeah. Maybe so we're we that should. close to having it. Try to mine. Sure. Six weeks. Two, two, three, seventeen, twenty. And you ordered it. When did you order it? A couple weeks ago. Okay. A month away from getting it. All right. So by theory, we could take and be done with it. We're Wait. hoping to be done by the, you know, middle of October. Or yeah, something yeah. along that line. Okay. Middle of the end of October. Hmm. No, no. When I said that, and it will be December, but. <laughs> well, maybe it'll be frozen. Just put, put the slab on top of the ice, and then it'll sink <laughs> right in place. <laughs> when, the, when the ice melts, it'll just drop in place. Right. Well, I wanted to explain to you what had happened, and I um, also would like to ask John to come in and talk to you. Sure. Yeah. So that was all on that. Right. Okay, letter received regarding town roads from Cyprus. I had put this in your packet. Um, I don't know, I haven't really spoken with Tim about that. Um, this was one gentleman who had some concerns about our bicycling on our roads. Um, I think his concerns certainly are valid. I don't know what I can do too much to help them, but we'll do our best. But I wanted you to be aware that we had gotten a letter okay. um, regarding that. 
um, when you drive down toward Montpelier, there is a section where they did not go the full width of the road. Yes, yeah. I'm going to put you in the middle of the table yeah. again. So. Okay. Sorry, guys. No worries. Technology. Yeah. I know. I know what that's like. So that's all I wanted to yep. mention on that one. I mean, been able to ride on that road forever. So what's 25 years ago, you could ride your bike on that road. If I went on TV. <laughs> yeah, well, it's okay. And, you know, the, the grinding and paving in the travel portion is becoming commonplace. Yeah. Yeah. With rumble strips and, and so on, I mean, that, it saves a lot of money mm -hmm. to mill and pave within the travel way. And that's what's done down picture. Sure, sure. And I don't know about narrowing the road so that we have a wide field. Oh, uh, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know that would be either. Can we even do that? Well, you're, in my opinion, moving backwards. You're now shrinking the road for trucks and cars so you have a little wider shoulder. Yeah. yeah, I mean, maybe next time we pave it, we just make sure that it goes as, you know, far enough out there and we just stripe it so that there's a clear place where bikers can use it. We we'll probably should have Tim go out and look at it and see just how bad the shoulders are. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that, I mean, paint trip like north anyway, so I don't think they're, they're great. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I lost my other half of my... Uh, I'm wondering, if Brad, if we could put the traffic signals in... Sure. For the next Let's item. Do that. Um, I didn't put that on when I was doing the agenda because I didn't have the paperwork, but we did uh, speak with the vendor regarding the two items that we had talked about at the last meeting, and that was to um, put the traffic detection device in that would uh, do the left turn detection. That was 23000 uh, replace the cabinet and the electrical service. The electrical service would just be something we would ask Green Mountain Power to, to do, uh, which is 23.5. So that comes to, uh, we had talked about 50,000, it's 46,500. So I'm, I'm just looking for um, the board to authorize the chairman to sign that acceptance. I'll move to approve the acceptance of the traffic signal upgrades for Fisher Road in the amount of 46500 and have the board chair sign the proposal. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We did have an incident today that the lights were flashing. They were not, you know, they were like, like they do in, at, in the middle of the night. Hmm. And apparently they had been doing it for some time and nobody knew. I had someone from the hospital call me and ask me about it. And so I called, we called the, this vendor and the fellow from Waterbury came right over and fixed it. So it's nice having someone that can right. do that quickly for us. Well, you know, if they need an extra light, we have one done in 302 <laughs> going into the grocery store. They take that and put it right up there. Don't you think we need that, though, <laughs> to make sure we know where to stop? Um, the next item, Brad, I had the private road that I wanted to add okay. on. Um, and that was just, Tom asked me uh, what the town's policy was on private roads. And they have a development happening up on Bartlett Road, which is going to have three lots. And when you get beyond two lots, you have to have a street name for the driveway, if you will, um, and have it numbered. We don't have a written policy for um, what happens on a private road, which probably will be a good idea in the future, but I wanted just to run this by you that they have suggested that it be named Thelma's Way. Uh, Tom has verified with 911 that it's not a problem um, as far as sounding like something else. Um, and also um, the DRB has encouraged owners that this happens that they should consider a maintenance agreement on a private road and to make the road up to town standards. 
Um, and, and, and where is this again? It's off of Bartlett Road, yeah. which is off of uh, Junction Road. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So I just wanted you to be aware that that's kind of what we suggested on that. Um, and so, so, so we don't have to take any action on that. That was just information. On the I don't believe you have uh, okay. any yeah. need to do anything on a private road. Yeah. However, just uh, if they, I mean, I think it would be behoove the people doing the development to make sure that the road is at state spec. That is what the DRB recommended as well. And also, if ever they came to you wanting to add it as a town road, you'd ask them that anyway. Yeah. Is that something we can have Tim kind of take a look at as developer? <coughs> sure. So I mean, that later on we're not asking for borings. And yeah. Sure. Well set on that one. Thank you. Yes, I am. Anything else on that? Um, not on the private roads. I do have. Um, I'd like to talk about the letter to the sewer customers. We had talked about that last week. I had given you a sample that we had come up with and you were not impressed. So we went back <laughs> to the drawing board, rewrote this letter, and I'm sorry, I just got this back today. We sent it over to um, Sean Fielder over at the uh, Vermont Rural Water Association. Um, Tom felt that I had said things that I couldn't say, um, so I guess it was good. And but. Sean sent this back, and a lot of it is, and uh, what I had kind of suggested. So, but Sean has. Uh, you're welcome to read it. Basically, it's just explaining to um, customers what the advantage to them would be by doing that. And so, if you would, um, in the essence of time, I was hoping maybe you could sign the letter tonight, and I could have give it to Tom so we could mail it. Um, the Rural Water Association, they know who's responded to the survey. They would send um, people that ha they haven't heard from, they would send them another um, form. We've explained that the town, we don't, have, we don't have access to anyone's information and we're just looking for a general average number. I think it was clear and explained why yeah. it was important. I'm glad that we're just sending it to the residential customers too. Like the bond vote, I heard from several people about the bond vote saying, why would we pay for this? This doesn't help us. And you have to explain to each and every one that you only pay for it if you're right. Sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and being connected saves you. Motion to sign. Motion to approve the letter as written and signed. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Approval of select board minutes for 723-2018. I'm sorry, I put the 23rd, but it's really the 16th. I mean, sorry. 16th? Last time I get one of these, don't I know. <laughs> That's my way of testing. I myself. feel blue, boy. <laughs> so did I. Mm. 
Oh, nice of you to come. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. <laughs> Anytime. I'll move to approve the minutes of July 16th as published. Here a second. Second. Yeah, so that's you. Yeah. There. Yeah. <laughs> Any further discussion? Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstaining. Motion carries. And so we're all caught up on our minutes, huh? Yeah. We have one set that is left, August 6th. The oh, last meeting. Which okay. I don't have. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Town administrative report. And I have a, I have a short report because I've discussed the other items I had with you. Um, first item that I'd like to chat with you about is our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, September 3rd, which is Labor Day. I would like to move that meeting to Thursday the 6th. That fits with your schedule. Due to the room being used Tuesday and Wednesday. So if that's amenable with you, I'll post it for the 6th. Yep. Okay. I'm sorry, when were you talking? Uh, <laughs> September 6th instead yeah, of sorry. September 3rd, yeah. Yeah. which is a Thursday. Uh, the other item I have is I received from the league. Um, the paperwork to appoint a voting delegate for the annual meeting uh, that will be at the Hilton in South Burlington on Wednesday, October 3rd. Uh, in the past, um, Tor went to those meetings and he was appointed as delegate. Um, if any one of you would like to go, that would be great. Otherwise, I'd be happy to do it. I have the audit audit going on, so I'm not sure if, if I can do any more than just go for the business meeting, but. Um, Is it an all day up here? No, it starts at 12.30. It runs probably about an hour and a half. That's not the, not the same as the, the, there is an annual thing. That's, that's there is an events. annual thing at the same time. This is what I'm talking about, just the business portion of the part of the meeting, nice. yeah. But yes, um, they have a two-day event. Uh, I think it's the second and third, um, or maybe it's the third and fourth in South Burlington. I, I, I can do it if n nobody else wants to. It's free my schedule. So, sure. <laughs> so if you would do a motion to that effect, and then if I could have the chair, the chairperson sign that, I will put Jeremy's name on there and send it back to the league. What, what, what was the time for that again? Uh, Twelve thirty, and I'll send you okay. this information. Okay. So a motion. We need a motion to appoint Jeremy Hansen to go as a voting delegate to uh, VLTC. So that, why don't I give you that? <laughs> I thought you were baiting me. <laughs> uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. There may be some other backup, Jeremy, that I'll send to you when I have it. Sure. Ah, maybe I have it. Let me just give it to you. <laughs> Super. Okay. They're going to be voting on municipal policy. These are the proposals. It's got stable in the middle of it. Anything else, Dana? Thank you. That's all I have. Uh, round table, Pete? Just bring up, we haven't approved the licenses. Oh. Uh, I didn't know you want to see here. Uh, approval of licenses, permits, right. vouchers, and applications. Move to approve general fund accounts payable warrant number uh, 9G04 with checks 18327 through 18394 in the amount of $83,921.50. Also, general fund accounts payable warrant number CBNA01 in the amount of $16,934.03. Also, payroll warrant number 19-04 for payroll from August 5th, 2018 through August 18th, 2018 in the amount of 
$542.28, also July 2018 journal entries, also July 2018 reconciled bank statements for the General Fund Sewer Commission and the Water Division. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. And anything else, Pete? <laughs> no. <laughs> Wayne? No. Jeremy? I had a chance to go down to Dog River Brewery down Barry Montpelier Road. I just, I, because I never really knew that it was down there. It's a pretty, it's a pretty cool spot. That's, mm. it. That's all I got. Anything else, Dana? No, I have nothing all else. Set. And uh, anything on? Uh, Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second.